Good morning and welcome to Studio 5 Going Live. This is, I believe, day 10 of the Studio 5 online exhibition. Once again, if you're interested in any of the work or indeed you want any information about anything that you've seen, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Today we're going to be looking at um, a clockwork orange. Uh, for me, um, I first had exposure to the clockwork orange, clockwork orange, a clockwork orange, was of course by the very famous uh, Stanley Kubrick film of 1971. Um, it eventually got banned in the UK in 1973 after copycat killings, which will give you some idea, or people believed they were copycat killings, I have to be very careful in what I say, um, and, um, and so you can get an idea of of the the nature of the book anyway um the original uh, book was uh written and well, still is written i suppose by anthony burgess in 1962 um we're going to be looking at the 1970 reprint and there we have um the box and again going on from yesterday about not necessarily having to title the box what i've done is i've actually included in here on the spine an image from the finished artwork on the uh, binding itself. Anyway, that's the box, that's the protection and the boring bit. Let's have a look at the book. And the reason the box is purple, well, we'll find out very soon. And that is a clockwork orange. Um, basically, for those of us, of us of a technical bent, and I know there are some technical bent people out there, the binding itself is 21.1 centimetres high by 13.5 centimetres, by 2.5 centimetres, and of course that's when closed. The construction is a disappearing spine Bradell binding with double and single board work, uh, mixed media which includes um, uh, hand-coloured, hand-dyed leathers, um, various papers, mixed media, etc, etc. Basically, if I can sort of, without giving the plot or being a sort of a spoiler on this, um, Anton Burgess, and there is a signed plate in the front of the book as well. Um, he uh, wrote this as a, uh, for some time in the near future in the UK, a dystopian society. And basically it's about a uh, young guy and it's his sort of uh, narrative um, about an ultra-violent society. And he it, it really is a very... It's very difficult, let's put it like that. And if you have seen the film, I suggest you read the book because in many ways the book is far more out there, shall we say. Um, where does the term clockwork orange come from? Well, it is reported that Burgess overheard the phrase as queer as a clockwork orange in a pre-war, that's 1939 to 1945, um, a London pub. And indeed, um, not only was Burgess a um, writer, but he was also a linguist. And he, used, funnily enough, used to travel to Russia quite a lot. That's another story, of course, though. And um, he, this part of the text, the narrative, if you like, is actually in a language called Naz, Nadsat, something like that. Please forgive my pronunciation, which is a mixture of sort of uh, Russian, Slavic, I think, and sort of cockney rhyming sort of slang so it can actually be very difficult to get round the text but once you understand it once you see it it becomes very very readable um right let's have a look at the binding itself well if we look at the various materials and everything it is very much a, a book that looks as if it's had stuff thrown at it and i suppose it has had stuff thrown at it we can see how the title a clockwork orange goes from the backboard starting with A just there, then clockwork, and that's A is done in collage work, whereas clockwork is done with traditional hand tools, just to, so people can see that I can actually do hand tooling, but there we go. And then on to the front board where we have the orange there. Again, I wanted it to look very sort of not pleasant. Um, it would be very easy for me to do a full leather binding, um, and sort of, uh, you know, a little bit of gold tooling work and some nice inlays and onlays of leather and that sort of thing. But to be honest, it just wouldn't have um, worked, in my opinion. Uh, this really does need 
um, you know, stuff to be thrown at it. And again, this is where I personally um, like to see different materials being worked into the binding itself because it does give a far wider sort of impression of what's actually happening inside the text block itself. And in a moment, we'll be having a look at that. So a little bit of close up there and you can physically see that, yes, it is a spray paint that I've used. The printing technique is an offset technique and a technique that is uh, sometimes referred to as um, reverse transfer, where basically you get a print and you can, using various solvents, always use and follow the instructions, of course, um, you can uh, transfer a, a, um, a print to another surface. And again, you get a very sort of deep quality to it. Now we come to the front end paper. And again, that's following that theme through and we can see back to blur and again we can see this theme being carried through for me um this book was actually quite difficult to do sorry there's a bit of a blip there for me this book was quite difficult to do because i really had to step away from doing a nice binding and i had to really work at this quite hard um it took me some time to do because i i knew what I wanted and I had to really work into the uh, boards and when I refer to the boards are in these areas here um, and it was really treating the boards and the binding as an artist would treat a canvas it's looking at it as a series of planes joined together anyway that's a clockwork orange um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, once again let's be safe out there and um, have a lovely day Thank you all very much indeed and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.